Pathpilot Quick Tips, Robot Edition. So, in the previous video, we talked about user frames in robotics and how they're similar to, but a little bit more complicated than work offsets on a CNC machine. Tool frames, you might imagine, are very similar to tool offsets on a CNC machine, but they get a bit more complex. If you're familiar with a CNC machine, a mill or a router, you probably know what a tool offset is. And the easiest, most intuitive way to think about tool offsets is something called true positive tool lengths. And that's where you think of the length of this tool as being the distance from the spindle nose down to the tip of the tool. So let's say for this tool it's three inches. If I apply that tool offset, I would see my ZDRO and my position readout change by three inches, right? And the X and Y DROs don't change at all, right? Because we're not offsetting in this direction or in this direction. It's a little more complex for a lathe. When you have a lathe tool, and we have a video on lathe tool offsets, you have two geometry offsets. You have the X geometry offset, and you have the Z geometry offset on a lathe. Um, and we saw in that video how it can quickly become less intuitive because, you know, what is the X length of the tool? Is it the distance between the tool tip and the, the shank of the tool holder? What's the Z offset? Is it the offset between the tip of the tool and the shank of the tool or the shank of the tool holder? Um, it's a lot more arbitrary. And what's really important in both machine tools, milling machine tool and lathes, is that you choose the same method, the same reference surface. So in lathe tools, it gets a lot more complex by just adding one axis, right? Now you have this X offset in there on top of your Z offset, and it's a lot more challenging to think about. Tool frames in robots add another four degrees of freedom on top of that. So we no longer just have a Z offset. All of a sudden we have X, Y, Z, and A, B, C offsets. So we have your traditional X, Y, Z, plus we have roll, pitch, and yaw. And that's, that's where tool frames in robotics become a lot more powerful and a lot more complex. So we're going to start by showing the easiest of tool frames to understand. I've got just a spring-loaded Sharpie mounted into a little 3D printed holder here that bolts to the end effector tool flange. And we can see with this tool, we really do just have a Z offset, right? It's the length from the end effector flange down to the tip there. If this, this fixture were such that, you know, the, the Sharpie was held over here, then we might have X or Y or both offsets as well, right? Um, but this one, very simple, just a Z offset. And in all likelihood, C, right, or A, or B aren't required at all. We just have a point, a tip. And we'd want probably our robot program to be thinking of this direction as a Z direction. So this is going to be the easiest one to think about. Similarly easy to understand is this, this probe here. So it's a touch probe, and the tip of the probe is concentric with uh, the end effector flange. Really the only thing we need to offset is a Z dimension. Um, we don't so much have to worry about other dimensions. So this is another one where we're just its kind of like a machine tool. We're just looking at a Z offset and we don't have to think about X, Y, A, B, or C offsets. So next let's move on to something a little bit more complicated. So this, we have two pneumatic grippers. They're called two-finger pneumatic grippers. Very simple, very common. These ones happen to be adjustable, so you can adjust the grip range of them. They'll open all the way up to, I don't know, four inches or so, uh, and they close all the way down to nothing. Um, but we have two of them, and they're mounted, first off, they're not concentric with the end effector flange, right? This one is offset. It's offset by a bit. And this one isn't even in line with the end effector flange. So let's mount this up and see what this looks like from a tool frame. So 
So we've got this gripper mounted up here, right? And we've got one of these pneumatic two-finger grippers here. And I'm going to start by talking about this one. Typically, you think of the, the direction, and this is really up to the user, but typically I like to think of the direction that the gripper is pointing in as the Z direction. If I'm going to move down to grab something, I'm thinking about that, that movement as Z. So we've got this guy. I'm going to think about this oriented as the Z direction. But you can see we also have an offset here, right? Here's the center of the end effector flange. We've got an offset, an X offset, and perhaps not a Y offset because it's not up or down here, right? We're looking Z, X, Y. Now let's take a look at the other one. This is another gripper that would get a separate offset. So you remember earlier I mentioned I like Z to be the direction that we're moving in to grip something. So I want this direction to be Z. Now, that's a change. The last two things we've talked about, the pen and, and this gripper, Z is the same direction as the end effector flange here. But this one, Z is coming out this way. So in order to reorient Z so it's going this way, we need to have a rotation, either an a rotation or a B rotation of 90 degrees to get Z point in the right direction. So we've got a Z offset and we probably also have some other offset here, maybe X or maybe Y. And this is how you can see it's, it just gets like on a lathe. It's harder to conceptualize what the X and Z offsets really are. On a mill, it's pretty easy. What's the Z offset? Well, it's the length of the tool. On a lathe, what's the X and Z offset? Well, it's the length of the tool. What do you mean length of the tool? The distance of the tip to the shank of the tool holder? On a robot, what's the A, B, and C offset? Well, even on a simple gripper like this, it becomes harder to understand, which is why we end up training the gripper uh, to determine the offset. Let's go over here to the screen, and we'll see what these offsets look like on the screen. So this, um, this gripper is one that we sell, which means that we have offsets pre-programmed for it. And you can see here, if I don't have the gripper attached, we have a Z direction, that's that blue that's coming out of the end effector flange, an X direction that's the red, and a green direction that's the Y. As soon as we apply that first offset, this is the first one we were talking about. You can see the model of the gripper shows up here. And you can see that we now have offset our Z0 point for the tool by this distance here. And we've also offset in X a little bit. And if we go look at the, we go look at the offset screen, we can see there's a 48 millimeter X offset, 150.8 millimeter Z offset, and there are no other offsets, right? Let's go back, and the second one that we discussed, I'm going to activate that offset. We're going to go in here, and now you can see Z is pointing a different direction. It's 90 degrees from where it was before. So let's take a look at what that offset looks like in, in, in terms of the settings. We have an X offset of 162 millimeters. That would be moving. We have a Y offset of just 6.3 millimeters. We have a Z offset of 31 and an A and a C rotation of 90 degrees. And that's what pivots that thing over. And, and you can see just how complex this gets. This is, this is a very simple gripper, but we got a fairly complex offset for it. Uh, just to hit the concept home, let's talk about the multi-grip gripper for a second and why you want Z to be oriented the way it is on the multi-grip gripper. So here we have a multi-grip gripper by VersaBuilt, and it's made for exchanging a set of soft jaws from pneumatic vices in a milling machine. It makes uh, low volume, high mix, automated work holding a heck of a lot easier. We'll have some separate videos on this. But in general, I like to think of this gripper as matching the orientation of the CNC machine that's going to go into. So in this case, I've got Z being up, right? These are, the, these are the soft jaws we're going to use to machine something. 
Z is up, just like it would be in a mill. And uh, we also offset from X and Y here as well. And so this is another instance where you know, the default, if no tool frame is applied, Z would be coming out of the end effector, but we need to engage a rotation here of at least 90 degrees in A or B in order to get Z pointing up. So let's take a look at what that tool offset looks like in the software. So here we have no tool offset applied. You can see Z is coming straight out of the end effector. We go ahead and apply that multi-grip offset, and now Z is coming straight up out of the top surface of the multi-grip gripper. And we have an X and a Y offset applied as well. With multi-grip, we've got an X offset, a small Y offset, large Z offset, and you see rotations about A, B, and C to get that orientation that we want. Tool frames quickly get complex. Not the kind of thing where you dig out the measuring tape and start setting these things yourselves by typing in values on a screen. Thankfully, PathPilot makes it really easy to train a tool frame. Um, and in the next couple of videos, we're going to show you how to use PathPilot and Robot to train, train a user frame and train a new tool frame. Thanks so much for watching.